Hi guys, Drew back again with Princess Craft RV and today we are going to walk through the appliances and accessories on the 2021 Lance 1475. I hope you all are ready to live that Lance life. Up front here at the coupler, the 1475 is going to ride on a two inch ball. We have a standard slide latch coupler here. So the unlocked position is going to be fully back uh, here. From there, we're going to use our Lippert Smart Jack to raise that coupler about three inches above our ball. Once we are centered underneath that coupler, we go ahead and lower that back down on top. We're gonna take our slide latch, slide that fully forward, paying special attention that we do have uh, both our teeth here on either side of that latch fully engaged there in the frame and then also of course you're going to take your secondary pin pin that back uh, keep that from potentially rattling loose going down the road now once you've done that you're going to take your toe chains we're going to cross those underneath the coupler and hook those onto the receiver of the tow vehicle very important that you have enough room to make your turns left to right uh, and also that those chains are crossed. Riding right next to those tow chains is going to be your emergency breakaway cable. Uh, biggest thing with this is you do need a third or separate connection point on the receiver for this. This is essentially your last line of defense if the other tow components were to fail here as the two vehicles were to separate. This is going to act like a rip cord to the electric brake system, uh, applying full 12 volts to those brakes. Uh, also, we have your seven-way receptacle here or seven-way plug. This is going to plug into the bumper receptacle on your vehicle. This is going to give you full function to your tow vehicle's charging system, braking system, tail lights, marker lights, all that fun stuff. Uh, again, make sure you have enough slack when this is installed into your vehicle to make your turns left or right, but not so much that this may make contact with, your, make contact with the pavement. Uh, hopping up here to your uh, smart jack or electric tongue jack, uh, this has a couple features that separates it from your standard electric tongue jack. It will automatically recall hitch height memory as well as uh, auto retract. Uh, other than that, uh, operation is going to be very standard. You do have a halo light underneath that's going to give you a point of reference if you are backing up to the unit at dark. Also help light this space again if you are doing any uncoupling uh, or coupling at dark time. Uh, also, you have a battery indicator and then up or down arrows for your direction of travel. In the event that you do have a power loss situation, you could go ahead and remove this plug. That's going to expose a three quarter inch drive nut. The crank handle that you would use for your spare tire would then pull double duty to allow you to manually operate this up or down again in the event of a power loss situation. Directly behind that electric tongue jack, we do have your 20 pound propane cylinder. This will be full for you at time of delivery. When it does come to remove it for service, you're going to loosen this tension band here. You would make sure your valve at the top of the tank is in the off position or closed position. We then disconnect our regulator and pigtail here, and that tank is going to easily lift out for service. Now directly behind that, uh, this particular unit was ordered for the customer with a lithium battery install. Uh, of course, if you have not ordered your unit, feel free to order it in that capacity. Uh, we can also install that for you as a dealership if you were to be interested in that. Uh, in a standard capacity, it will generally house a uh, lead acid or flooded battery. So for most of our customers, battery maintenance is an important issue. What that's going to entail is pulling up the vent panels every 90 days, maintaining that water level uh, at the clearly marked water level in, again, at once every 90 days. Taking a look here in the front storage compartment, of course you have an extremely large uh, pass-through compartment, magnetic hold opens on each door. Uh, what we're going to find in that compartment is a couple tap lights. Uh, tap the lens to turn those lights on. You have both those on the driver and the passenger side. We also have our docking light switch. Uh, you have a couple LEDs on either side of the tongue up front. 
again, to help aid light that space if you're doing any maintenance after dark. And then we also have our battery disconnect switch here. That's designed for periods of long-term storage, so make sure that we are turning that into the off position and removing the key. Again, for any period longer than a week or so, uh, that's going to help isolate that battery from the 12 volt system uh, to help keep that in tip top shape while in storage. Uh, also, we have our three quarter inch lug wrench here. That's going to aid you if you need to do any tire maintenance uh, going down the road. A lot of people don't carry that kind of stuff with them, so it is nice to have a standalone mount here in the camper. We're going to talk about the spare tire location when we get to the other side of the compartment. And moving on here, taking a look uh, down low, making sure we're not missing anything for you today. Uh, we do have our freshwater drain. So this corresponds with a two inch PVC elbow. Uh, what this means is that it's a very quick and easy to go ahead and drain your freshwater holding tank. Uh, what you will do is just go ahead and pull this handle, give it a six inch pull towards you. Uh, of course that uh, water will evacuate from underneath the camper. And then up top here, we have our freshwater tank fill. So uh, if we are doing any boondocking or off-grid camping, before we get there, we are going to fill up our tank. We're going to stick a drinking water hose directly into the orifice there. We're going to fill up till we're satisfied, and then we cap it off. Now, just a reminder, you do need to pressurize that system with the built-in 12-volt water pump to draw that water up from the tank to the fixtures to make that usable. Beside that, we have a tank vent, uh, nothing that you have to worry about, but if you were curious, that's what the purpose of that is. And then we have our tires and lug nuts. Uh, those torques and pressure is very important. Uh, 65 PSI max tire pressure rating here on the tire. Of course, you can find that stamped very large on the side of the tire, uh, as well as, as the data tag on the driver's side front quarter. Corner. Now these lug nuts here have been torqued to a hundred foot pounds here in the shop. The manufacturer is going to recommend a retorque procedure that is outlined here on this sticker above uh, the tire. And that is going to be the initial 10, 25 and 50 miles. Lance wants you to go ahead and stop and check the torque of those lugs to make sure they are maintaining that hundred foot pounds. Uh, from there on after, if you do any tire changes or maintenance, that retorque procedure needs to start over. Uh, anytime you remove the tire for the first 10, 25, and 50 miles, you are going to be checking lug nut torque. Manufacturer further recommends that at the start of each trip there on after, you do go ahead and check and make sure they are maintaining that 100 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, now moving on here, we have um, cable satellite inlet up top here. Uh, what this is going to allow you to do is feed those services to the unit. Uh, whether that's an aftermarket satellite package or a park cable service, these are just going to be the inlets, some standard RG6 cable fittings that terminate at the designated TV area. We then have our 30 amp, 110 volt power supply here. This is going to only plug into the camper one way. So if we go ahead and remove that, we can take a look. You have two slanted prongs and one L-shaped. If we go ahead and line everything up, Give it an eighth inch turn to the right, that locks it in. Then we do have a secondary collar here to screw down, lock it in further, keep things nice and secure. One recommendation that I make for every unit that I deliver is going to be the addition of a 30 amp surge protector. Uh, there's a lot of variables when you're out there staying in an RV park. Uh, you of course have our environmental surges, you have dirty power, substandard wiring. Uh, of course, I don't need to tell you that there's a lot going on within these units electronically. So it's very important that we protect, uh, protect it from our incoming power. And of course, the only way to do that effectively is with a 30 amp surge protector. Now we have some pretty specific products that we recommend and of course use is important. So if you do have any questions on, again, what we recommend and how to use them, feel free to give our parts department a call. They would be more than happy to educate you on what we recommend and how to use it. Another thing to talk about in terms of your power supply here, uh, we include a 30 to 15 amp producer with the unit. That's this little puck style uh, thingamajig in my hand. Uh, this is helpful if you want to like pre-cool the refrigerator, you want to check like basic functions of lights and, and, and you know, smaller draw things. Uh, this is totally fine for that, it will work just fine. Now, if you want to run the air conditioner, maybe run the microwave, things like that, uh, it's going to be our recommendation that you do upgrade this to a dog bone style reducer. What it does is it just separates the ends with like 12 inches worth of cord, helps dissipate heat a whole lot better uh, when you are running those higher draw appliances. So just something to keep in mind. 
then if we go ahead here and look uh, back at the camper, we have our city water connection. This is, of course, going to be what you will use in the capacity of an RV park or if you have access to full-time running water, uh, this is going to be what we're using. Next up is going to be our city water connection. This is, of course, what we're going to use if we have full-time access to running water, we're in an RV park, something like that. Uh, when talking about our city water connection, water pressure is very important to mention. Uh, these units are generally rated for anywhere between 50 and 75 PSI water pressure unless marked somewhere else on the camper. Uh, out there in the wild or at the campground, you may find anywhere from 80 to 100 uh, PSI water pressure. So it's very important that we do regulate that pressure going in. This particular water pressure regulator is rated between 40 and 50 PSI, so this is going to be perfect for what you need. Now, when using this, you're going to hook this directly onto the water source, so as close to the water source as can. And then we take the spigot side of our hose, screw that onto that water pressure regulator. It's okay if you keep these connected all the time uh, to help not lose that. That's totally fine. But then we take our uh, trailer side or uh, trailer bound connection here, and we make that connection by rotating the hose bib on the camper. So very easy to do so. All right, if we take a look down low here, we're going to see a couple things. We have our low point drains, of course. We have our Bladex valves and our bayonet fitting here. So uh, when it does come to dump our waste water, we're going to remove our cap here. Uh, you can see a couple keyholes along that cap and some corresponding studs. If you put that in the halfway position, uh, give it a clockwise turn, that's gonna go ahead and lock that on. It's going to be the same process that you will use for your sewage hose as well. You can see it has the same, very same keyholes there. Uh, now when it comes to the proper, uh, the proper way to go ahead and dump this, you have gray for gray water, black for black water. Uh, black water is going to be anything that comes from the toilet, uh, body waste, toilet paper, all that stuff. Gray water is going to be sink water, shower water, uh, the relatively cleaner of the two. So. Uh, we're going to keep these in the closed position. We're going to use the monitor panel uh, on the inside. We are only going to dump as necessary. It's very important that we also uh, keep these kind of uh, isolated from each other. You're not going to have want to have both valves open at the same time. It's our goal to avoid any cross-contamination or backfeeding. So the idea being is that you're going to make your connection here. Of course, you're going to route this to your dump location. When it does come to dump, it's as easy as pulling this forward pulling this towards you uh, six inches to open up that valve. You give it a six inch pull towards you. Uh, you let your waste, of, your waste water, of course, drain completely. Then we're gonna close that black water valve up. And then the popular option would be to open up this gray water. That's going to rinse any shared plumbing and your sewage hose on the way out. Now, once you're, you're fully dumped at this location, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use this black tank flush. What that does is that corresponds with a jet inside the black water tank, specifically designed to help blast off compounded toilet waste, body waste, things like that. But it's very important that we operate that properly. So we're going to, once we've dumped our gray water here, we're gonna then reopen up that black water valve. And that is of course the most important part of this because we do not wanna overflow that black water tank. So make sure you open up that black water valve. You're gonna make your connection here with any old garden hose. Uh, of course, not your drinking water hose, but any old hose. And uh, what you're going to do is you are going to rinse that tank out with this valve again in the open position. Uh, generally, I will recommend people to do so until that water runs clear. Uh, also, down below here, we have our low point drains. Those are going to be the lowest point in the unit's plumbing. This is how we're going to drain the water lines within the unit. Everything in between water source and fixture will be drained from this location. Uh, anytime the unit is going to be in storage for more than seven days, it's very important that we do purge all the water from the system. Number one is going to be the freshwater holding tank. We saw that valve. It's just, again, a six inch pull towards you. Next would be unscrewing these water lines here. And then lastly, we're going to end by draining the Truma separate of the rest of the system. And just for your information, that Truma is going to be your boiler system. That's going to be your hot water and your heater as well. We'll get to the, of course, the proper procedure on how to do that when we get to the exterior or to the interior of the camper and we take a look at that stuff. Uh, also, we have our outside shower here. Of course, nothing too crazy in terms of function. You do have a hard on off here at the fixture. So what that means for you is that uh, you could have these valves open and have this off and you're not gonna see water here. 
some people have made the mistake of uh, kind of feeding this up in here um, with the water still on. As you can see, that on-off handle is directionalized towards the door. Uh, theoretically, you could have these valves on, this off. You go ahead and shut the door, turn that water on, uh, potentially flood out your in interior compartments, although that, that may be unlikely, uh, but just a heads up on that. Here at the rear of the unit, of course, not too terribly much to speak of uh, from a functionality standpoint. This particular unit was ordered with a backup camera. Uh, really cool feature. What that allows you to do is go ahead and get a full rear view uh, when going down the road. Anytime your marker lights are on, that camera will be on and communicating with the uh, included monitor. And then also we have our refrigerator vents here. Now from a maintenance standpoint, there's not too terribly much that you're going to be doing uh, from the day to day with this particular appliance. My recommendation is going to be go ahead and remove these vents out of the way, give it a visual inspection a couple times a year. Uh, if it's operating properly and passing that visual inspection, then everything's probably okay. Now, one thing to mention is that uh, here in Texas, we have a problem with mud daubers and flying insects. So it's gonna be our recommendation as a dealership that you do go ahead and screen off these, uh, both these vents top to bottom to keep any uh, critters from getting in there and nesting. Now, when you are installing or removing these vent covers, uh, you have, of course, four slots there on the bottom. If we line everything up and everything is sitting flush then all we have to do is give these a quarter turn that's going to go ahead and lock those on i always go back and give it a pull there to make sure that it is in fact locked on uh, so i'm not going to lose this going down the road uh, other than that here at the rear not too terribly much to speak of again you have tail lights marker lights uh, all that noise uh, but other than that pretty straightforward next up here is going to be the truma vent uh, this is going to be the exhaust vent for the truma system uh, so make sure you're doing just that. Let it exhaust. Uh, make sure you're not blocking the flow of this. Uh, sending a lawn chair up in front of it, it does need to breathe, obviously. Another really cool feature here of the 1475 is going to be the addition of the Glow Step Revolution. Uh, this is a step up from your standard RV step. Uh, Multi-positional to take in account for different ground grades. Uh, very easy to kind of pull out or stow away. You have a locking bar here, so you just kind of pull this up and then at the same time you're going to go ahead and uh, fold it up now these are stiff so it may take a little breaking in but once you've done so the one thing that you do want to pay special attention to is that you have actually fully locked that in so make sure that that locking bar is coming down uh, and keeping that intact and then you do have a secondary safety pin here uh, to pin that uh, to again keep that nice and secure here we have our exterior TV area of the unit. Uh, idea being is that you could take this second TV mount, go ahead and mount this onto a, a second TV, of course, and then make your connection here at the camper very easily. Uh, you're gonna seat this top bar first, and then you have a little release button here that's going to allow you to overcome at the bottom. So you go ahead and do just that. That's going to snap on nice and secure. And then we have a couple different options to go ahead and power that TV. If it's a 110 volt TV, of course you have some all weather outlets here. And then if it were to be a 12 volt TV, we have a standard 12 volt style cigarette lighter style receptacle, a couple USBs. And then we do have a pass through cable connection. Uh, what we saw on the other side would be the inlet of those services. This would be an outlet. Again, just a pass through connection to feed those services to the TV area here. And then to the right of that, we have a spot where you can mount that Furon Bluetooth speaker. Uh, and as opposed to having some hard mounted uh, speakers here on the exterior, Lance's went that way. They've allowed you to go ahead and um, add, or utilize that speaker here on the exterior. And then of course, move it to the inside when you wanna go ahead and uh, enjoy that inside. And then we have the other side of your pass-through storage compartment here. Uh, again, not much different from the door that we saw at the beginning of the presentation, one thing to note is going to be the location of your spare tire. Uh, this is gonna be your spare tire crank handle. The reason why it is so short is because the gravity feed for that spare tire is gonna be right here in the storage compartment. If we go ahead and remove that uh, white cap, you can see that that crank handle is going to fit right there on the stud. And that's going to allow that uh, you to crank that down from in between the frame rails 
uh, here on the underside of the camper to uh, change any spare tires. And then uh, we of course have the tap lights here. We have the other side of your storage compartment or of your sewage hose storage there. And then we have our um, portable solar hookup here. So this is a direct connection to the uh, battery up front. What this is going to allow you to do is supplement solar uh, with a portable panel. Most of those portable panels will have the charge controller built directly into the panel. Uh, that's going to help maintain the level of your battery correctly. Other than that, here it is just a plug and play connection. And further up of the camper, we have Sugar Dog. All right, that just about covers it here with the exterior of the 1475. Let's take a look at the accessories and features there on the inside. Right inside the entry door here, first thing up is going to be, of course, a very important piece of safety equipment. Um, fire extinguisher here. We're going to inspect our fire extinguisher every single time we take the unit out to make sure it is in good working condition. Uh, you have a pressure gauge here. We are just going to make sure that that's holding pressure uh, and, again, is in good working order. We not only inspect our fire extinguisher, but we do test our smoke alarm and our carbon monoxide LP leak detector as well. We will get you a visual on where those are throughout the camper. Next up is going to be our three-way Norcold refrigerator. Uh, what that means for you is that this runs on 110 volt electricity, propane gas, as well as 12 volt. Uh, we have our main power button here. It'll be a long to press to turn that on and then a short button or short button press to kind of wake up the panel here. And then we, um, from there, we have our mode selection button here that's gonna take us through those, those, those modes as well. You have four options. You have auto AC when you are on that auto AC mode. Uh, what that means is if power becomes interrupted for any reason, it's gonna automatically start trying to light on gas. Uh, that's by far the most popular option for our customers. If we go ahead and hit that again, that's just going to take us into standalone AC mode. Uh, if power becomes interrupted, then it, it, it does not switch over to gas, obviously. And then we have our 12 volt mode here. Uh, now these, these RV style ammonia absorption refrigerators uh, have kind of some limitations when it does come to their 12 volt operation. Um, mainly being is that they, they run very kind of inefficiently or very hot. Uh, they consume a lot of power. Um, with that being said, if you do want to run this on 12 volt, you have to turn on kind of this secondary safety switch. Uh, Lance and the manufacturer of the fridge want to make sure that you are certain that you are um, putting it into 12 volt by, des by desire and not accidentally kind of hitting it on accident here. Um, so we can see that, that that turns right on once we hit that secondary switch there. I hit that button one more time that takes us into the propane mode there, uh, noted there by the little droplet of liquid propane. We have our temperature control here. The more bars you see, the cooler the unit's going to run. And then we have a seal defroster here. What that does is that just uh, corresponds with a little heat strip here in the seal to uh, uh, melt any uh, ice that may, um, may happen here on the door to get a nice tight seal. Uh, other than that, it is pretty straightforward, uh, kind of smaller RV style refrigerator. So. Right inside the door here, we have our main light switch cluster. Um, of course, clearly marked here on the bottom in terms of function. Uh, first up is going to be our patio light. Now that one differs from the rest of the switches. It is a three positional switch, uh, middle being off, uh, down being a bright white LED, and then up being kind of an amber colored bug light. Uh, and then next up is going to be the awning light switch. Uh, there's an LED light strip that is on the roller tube for the awning. Uh, of course, that's the on off switch for that. And then our courtesy light is just the uh, main light right over the entry door. Just a light switch that you can hit coming into the unit uh, to, to light your way to get some other lights on. And then up above that, we have our awning control switch. Now this is a carefree uh, awning, what that means is it is equipped with uh, wind protection. Uh, to operate that, you're going to turn this into the on position. And it is a one-touch awning, so you would then hit either extend or retract. Uh, one time, that awning is going to fully extend or fully retract. For that wind protection to be in effect, this switch does need to be in the on position, so make sure that it is on. 
Now that wind protection is a great feature. Uh, it's not necessarily something that I would bet my lunch on. Um, these awnings should still never be left unattended in the extended position. Here we have the Truma unit. Um, of course, easily accessible when you open the cabinet door. Some things to talk about. Uh, we talked about on the inside draining the low point drains and of course draining the freshwater holding tank. Uh, before entering this unit into storage, it's very important that we do drain the Truma separately. It's going to hold like two and a half gallons of water separate of the system. And the only way to effectively get that water out is going to be draining it separate. Uh, to drain it, you have a couple of ways to do so. Uh, here in the back corner, it's a little hard to see. You're gonna see a brass fitting with a yellow tab. Uh, that kind of pulls double duty. That's your high pressure relief valve, but it's also going to be useful when it does come to draining it. Uh, it would be in the closed position now. And then if we were to be draining it, we're going to straighten out that um, piece of yellow plastic. And then also to drain the hot side of things, we have our, um, our valve here that we would need to open up. Both of these lines transition through the floor, so we're not gonna be making a mess in here. Uh, remember that we are going to drain that every single time we're entering the unit back into storage to keep that nice and fresh. And then one thing to also reference while we do have um, you know, your attention here in this compartment uh, is going to be the need to bypass the Truma system if we are doing a full winterization process, uh, kind of the chain of events would be draining all the water from the system, the freshwater holding tank, the low point drains, and then ultimately the Truma itself. We would then bypass this with a valve that is located on the back side of this yellow tag. So again, kind of hard to see, but um, it's on the back side here. What we're doing is we're creating a loop in the system. So we don't want to allow any of that RV antifreeze to enter the Truma. We're just creating a U in the system. So it kind of um, closes that system. And then we're going to touch base on how to further winterize the unit once we get to the under sink area. Starting here at the ceiling of the restroom, we have our kind of standard RV style uh, exhaust fan. You're going to crank up and then you have a toggle switch on that's going to help pull any moisture from the air. Uh, one thing to pay special attention to is that you do close it before going down the road. And then uh, we of course have your shower with the wraparound shower curtain. Has a magnetic strip here to hold that in the closed position. So uh, very easy to just wrap that around. And then uh, here at the actual fixture, hot and cold uh, as expected. And then you do have a on off switch there on the fixture that's gonna help you conserve water consumption. Uh, also, a standard uh, side flush toilet will be a light press to fill the bowl with water and then a full press to uh, actually flush. Now, do keep in mind that any chemical treatments, deodorizers, tissue dissolvers, all that stuff's going to be um, introduced to the system right here at the toilet. Uh, take a nice long flush if you can. Again, it's very important to keep that tank in as wet or flowing condition as we can. Uh, make sure you're using a single ply RV grade toilet paper. Uh, and again, just, just pay special a note that we are keeping that black water tank in the correct um, condition. And then uh, turning around here, uh, medicine cabinet, kind of nothing too crazy with that. Uh, we also have storage here underneath the sink. Uh, this is also going to give you access to the water line for the outside shower. Uh, generally, there's some valves there if you wish to cut off the flow of water to the outside shower for winterization prop, uh, purposes or anything like that. Uh, and then we have a cluster of light switches here right inside the door, one for the vanity light and then one for the overhead light. Next up, we have our solar charge controller. Uh, this unit again was ordered with solar. I'm not quite sure if this is a standard option, but uh, we have it here today. Uh, what this does is this actually is just kind of the brains behind that solar panel. This is going to intake energy as necessary, paying special attention not to overcharge the battery. Um, not much you have, uh, not much to control with this actual panel, uh, but it is going to give you information as in where your battery voltage sits, how many amp hours you're taking or how many amps you're taking in uh, via solar, things like that. Um, and then down below that, we have your convenience center. This is going to give you a real time readout of where your tanks sit. Uh, this is the monitor panel that we spoke of on the exterior of the unit. Uh, this is going to, again, let you know the levels of your tank. 
uh, on the scale here, the more lights you see, the fuller that specific tank is. So black water tank is reading two thirds full. Gray water is empty. Fresh water is full as well. And then battery is full. Now battery is gonna read full. Anytime you're plugged into shore power, that battery is being recharged. To get a real readout of where that battery sits in level of full, we're gonna of course unplug the unit and then test from this location. Uh, water pump switch is right next to that. You know that water pump is on when uh, that red light's on. And then we have our galley lights here. Uh, one's going to be for the, over, the light over the sink. And then our soffit lights are gonna be these uh, uh, small lights uh, above the cabinetry. Moving on here into the kitchen area, we have a standard kind of hood vent uh, with a light and fan. That's pretty, pretty much standard equipment. Uh, we have a tempered glass top here for our suburban cooktop. Uh, we fold that out of the way. And then we have our three burner cooktop with a uh, burner or a piezo igniter there. Uh, the idea being is you'd go ahead and turn this knob to the light, go ahead and rotate that burner clockwise. And of course, if we had propane hooked up into the unit, you'd see those lights. Uh, no oven in this particular unit. They've replaced that with a convection three-way grill. So this is a microwave, a grill, as well as a convection oven. Uh, the, the operation of it is going to be very kind of microwave-esque. You have your modes here at the top time and temperatures below that, some presets. Uh, it does come with its own service manual, but if you have any questions on operation, that's outlined here at the top as well. And then down below that, we have our fuse panel breaker box. Uh, if we go ahead and open up this door, everything there on the right is going to utilize a resettable breaker. Uh, everything on the left is going to be an automotive 12 volt fuse. Make sure we keep a spare set of fuses with us in the event that we uh, have one go out on the road or um, and, and something like that. And then we, beside that, we have another very important piece of safety equipment. This is going to be our carbon monoxide LP leak detector. Uh, again, we're going to test all of our safety equipment every single time we take the unit out. Uh, this is a 12 volt appliance, so there's no battery to maintain or anything like that. And does have a clearly marked test button. Uh, so you, uh, of course, just push the button. It will alert to you that it is in good working order and you're good to go. So you may notice underneath the kitchen cabinet, uh, you may see this clear hose here. Uh, what that is, is just a vacuum line to the water pump. It's used to introduce antifreeze into the system if you were doing a full winterization. Uh, if you were doing a full winterization, you would, of course, drain all of the water from the unit. Uh, we've talked about how to do that. You are then going to bypass the Truma. We've also talked about how to do that. And next you are going to use this vacuum line to introduce water into the, or excuse me, antifreeze into the system. So if you follow this clear hose back, you are going to soon come to a valve. We would open up that valve or put that into the secondary position. I believe that's towards me. So with that valve open, we're going to open up our bottle of antifreeze. We're going to take our vacuum hose and stick that right into the bottle. Uh, once we've done so, we're going to walk from water fixture to water fixture, turning both the hot and the cold side of each fixture on, uh, allowing that to run until we see that antifreeze at the actual fixture. Give it a few seconds to fill up the uh, outward plumbing, the P-traps, things like that. Uh, and if once you've done that to all of the water fixtures throughout the unit, you are going to be fully winterized. Uh, also here underneath the sink, you're going to find some pull-out storage drawers, which is an efficient use of space. Um, other than that, uh, just a word of caution, you do have water lines and things down there. So be careful with what you choose to store down here. Uh, nothing sharp that may damage, uh, sharp or heavy that may damage those water lines. Uh, also here on the face of the cabinetry, we have our main GFI outlet. Uh, all the 15 amp receptacles within this unit are on the same circuit. So if one of them were to get overloaded or trip, they kind of all follow suit. This is going to be the reset point to restore functionality to all of your receptacles. Into the kitchen area here, you're not going to see too terribly much that surprises you. Uh, countertop extender easily lifts out of the way to expose the sink. Uh, you have a round tub sink. Uh, no water hooked up in this unit, so we're not going to get to see the kind of multi sprayer options that we have here at the fixture, but that does pull down. Um, other than that, it is a, a residential fixture, so um, most of you will probably know how to operate that properly. Um, 
good I, or good time, I should say, to kind of demo the windows throughout the unit. Uh, all of the windows in the shades throughout the unit are going to operate uh, pretty closely to the same way. You will have the two-way shade, uh, the, spring, uh, the screen option, and then the privacy option as well. Uh, also, when you are opening the window, you have latches all around the window. And once you've done so, you go ahead and lift outward. Sometimes these struts might be tightened down. So that one was just a little sticky, but um, with that in the extended position, you go ahead and tighten those struts down. That will hold that in that extended position. And then of course, the idea being is that you could pull down the screen. You have a window screen. You can open up all of these windows, utilize those screens, and then you essentially have an open air atmosphere. Uh, when you do go ahead and close that window, a couple things to mention there as well. We go ahead and loosen up the struts. And then uh, if we go ahead and pull this shut, we have a middle channel here on the latch. If we were to go ahead and affix all of these into that middle position, you can see that window is still open about a fingertips width of opening. Uh, what that will allow you to do is vent the cabin, but still be relatively secure. If you're having like condensation issues, things like that, uh, you can utilize that to help uh, kind of combat that stuff. And then of course, when we go to close that window, we're going to pull that all the way back uh, past that piece of plastic and latch all of those before going down the road. Uh, also, we have the overhead cabinetry. I like this recessed light that they have installed with this, uh, with the presser switch. So that's going to come on and off uh, with the opening and closing of the door. Uh, we're then moving on here to the Truma system. Uh, this is going to be our control panel for the Truma system. Uh, one thing to note is going to be the, the operation. So uh, this kind of works like an old Palm Pilot where you have a turnstile here or an iPod or whatever, but you have a uh, turn button here that's going to take you through the uh, options or the modes, and then you confirm that by pressing that button in. Um, and then the only other button is a back button to take you uh, out of that setting. So um, push the center button there one time to get into the controls. Uh, the first one up is going to be this little uh, RV looking symbol that's going to be our thermostat so i hit that and that actually takes us from off and then we can actually dial a temperature once we are satisfied we hit that one more time to confirm and then once we've done that we can see up here that now there is a little flame indicator um, it's also trying to light on gas and then a fan there as well so we'll talk about more about those uh, as we make it through and then next up here this little Thermometer in water is going to be the water temperature. You have a couple options there as well. We have off, we have eco, we have hot, and then we have boost. So eco and hot are pretty self-explanatory, but with this boost, what that means is it's going to put all available power into heating water uh, as efficiently as it can. So what that means in terms of operation is if you are running the, the, the furnace or the thermostat, uh, at the same time as you're trying to heat water in that boost mode, it's going to momentarily power down the uh, furnace and put all available power into heating uh, as much water as quickly as possible. And so once we've confirmed that, we can see now it's trying to heat that water. And then if I go here to, uh, to the next option is going to be our sources. Uh, you have a couple sources here. You have gas. You have a mixture of gas and electricity. So it's giving us here a air because we actually, we don't have any gas hooked up to it. So, um, so gas is an option and mix, mix one, mix two, and then we have electric one and two. So uh, mix one and two is going to be a mixture of gas and electricity, uh, kind of at a low power consumption. Mix two is going to be a uh, higher energy consumption, uh, essentially out of the two options. And then if I go one more, it's going to be straight electricity, no mixed with gas, low power consumption, and then high power consumption with electricity too. And then lastly is going to be our fan speed. Again, we have that eco, and then we have a high. So just a couple options there. Uh, next up here is going to be the clock. That's going to be the, if we wanted to set a timer for this to come on and off, um, we could do that. And then 
since we do have a code, if you ever run with a code uh, to clear that code, you would select it. It's going to tell you what the code is. You hit that one more time to uh, kind of dismiss it. And then next up is going to be the clock. That's just going to be set the display clock that we see uh, here. And then lastly, we have our settings option. And that's going to take you into the unit settings there. Uh, before you try and adjust any settings, make sure that we are, uh, of course, reading the service manual and, um, you know, that we know what we do, that we know what we're doing before we try and um, change a bunch of things. And then right next to that, we have our standard thermostat with a single mode button up or down in terms of temperature. This is going to be for the air conditioner. Uh, so keep that in mind. You may see a furnace setting on here, but uh, the furnace is controlled through the Truma unit and not the Air Excel thermostat. So uh, when I'm going through the mode buttons, the first up is going to be fan low. Uh, we are again talking about the air conditioner fan speed. So we have fan low, fan high. If I hit that one more time, it's going to take us into the air conditioner options. Again, we're seeing that, that cool with a focused fan speed of high. And then I hit that again, it's going to take us into that low fan speed. And then next we will see cool low auto and cool high auto. So the difference between the high and the high auto or the low and the low auto is that, um, you know, it kind of throws out this, this thermostat setting out of the, the, or throws that out the window. Uh, because if you are on either straight up high or low without that auto feature, that air that fan is going to continue to circulate that air whether or not it has reached that temperature so essentially that fan will continue to run indefinitely uh, we can hit that one more time and it takes us straight to off so this particular setup does not have that furnace uh, option which is great because this unit does not have a standard therm uh, standard furnace uh, next up is going to be our jensen stereo unit here uh, this is going to be our multimedia center of sorts this is going to give you AM, FM radio, Bluetooth, CD, DVD, AM, FM radio, things like that. A single mode button here, settings, presets, things like that. Bluetooth pairing here. Uh, zones, we only have internal speakers here, so we don't need to worry about that exterior zone. Uh, most of my customers can you generally work themselves around this pretty easily, but if you do have any questions, uh, either give us a call or consult the user manual. And then above my head here, we have our King Jack antenna. Uh, here on the roof, we have an uh, antenna to pick up over-the-air television. Uh, it is uh, directionalized here right at the faceplate. Uh, this goes about 350 degrees, and then it stops, and then you have to come uh, go the other way. Uh, to use this properly, you have a signal indicator here. The more light you see, the stronger your signal is. So what you would do is you go ahead and rotate this until uh, you have the highest possible signal. Then you're going to use your television to do a channel search and it will bring in, a, again, any local channels you have dependent on signal. Now you see this on off switch here on the actual unit. Uh, that is not turning the unit off or cutting power to it. It is actually just turning this signal indicator off. Uh, as you could imagine, your bed's right here on the other side of this. So uh, in the middle of the night, if you saw these kind of pulsing blue lights, that would probably keep you up. To actually cut power to the antenna or turn the antenna off, we're going to have to go behind the television set to our antenna booster. You can see there's a little push button here with a green light. If I go ahead and push that, that actually cuts power to the antenna. And then also back here, not too terribly much, we have an HDMI cord that is connecting the Jensen head unit to the television. And then we have our 12 volt plug to power that television. Uh, one thing to take note also is we have the release mechanism for the, uh, the TV mount. Uh, it is multi-positional. As you can see, you can take advantage of that throughout the camper. Uh, but when it does come to go down the road, we want to make sure that we have that latched in. And you'll do so by centering the television and uh, making sure you kind of push that back until you hear that click. Once you've done so, you're locked in. And then to unlock or unlock it here, you just pull that ribbon. That's going to allow you to pull that out and uh, again, directionalize it. Another very important piece of safety equipment is of course going to be our smoke alarm. Uh, now this is a standard nine volt smoke alarm. Do keep in mind that it is my recommendation to keep a spare nine volt battery with the unit in the event that you would uh, need to of course replace it going down the road. 
Uh, also test button and as I've mentioned previously throughout this presentation, we test our safety equipment every single time we take the unit out. And again, to wrap up, that is our smoke alarm, our carbon monoxide LP leak detector, as well as our fire extinguisher. What we have here is going to be your Furon Bluetooth speaker. We've kind of talked about how you can hook this up outside. Uh, your main charging station is going to be here on this side of the cabinet. Uh, of course, that's the speaker there. And then we have your uh, fantastic vent fan remote here. Uh, you can, of course, you have a little bracket here. You can mount that wherever you'd like. Uh, but if we go ahead and look at this, we have an on off switch. We have a set speed so we can, of course, um, adjust that speed in like 15% increments. And then we actually, if we were to adjust this other side of things, we can actually set a thermostat uh, to kick on and off to attain these temperatures here. Uh, then we can lower that down, but we can still have the fan on if we wanted to not necessarily vent to atmosphere, but just circulate the air within the camper, uh, we can do so as well. Also has a built-in rain sensor. So if it were to start raining when you were, um, you know, in the middle of the night, that hood, that vent's going to automatically close down. Uh, when we look at the actual unit itself, uh, keep in mind that you do have a four amp fuse here. That's going to be a standard bus style fuse. Uh, if this does give you, if you have any reliability issues with this particular appliance, it's more than likely going to be that fuse needing to be changed. Uh, may not be a bad idea to keep a spare with you. Uh, also, of course, looking here into the bed area, uh, a couple other things. We have the monitor uh, for your backup camera uh, that'll be installed in your vehicle. We also have these vent covers. Uh, these are part of Lance's all weather package. Uh, what this is going to do is help keep the cold air in or warm air in. Uh, or warm air out and cold air in depending on season uh, it will do that well and then we have your tabletop here in your uh, lagoon mount uh, so when we go to install this uh, it's very easy to do so of course you're going to assemble the uh, arm pieces first and you are going to do so let me make sure i have this correct so you just go ahead and insert that there you can go ahead and up oh, i it upside down so they give you a sticker there to probably make things easy for you so make sure the uh, logo is right side up and then you can tighten that down now our bracket to actually hold this in place is right here in between the two seats so we're going to go ahead and loosen that up slide that on the rail as best you can now when you're tightening this up you see how I, i'm limited in my pass by the um you know, the, the carpeted area here. Uh, so what you do is if you pull that out, that releases the gearing and you can actually like turn that with your thumb um, or you could just like crank it, reset and get another crank on it. And I overly loosened it. So I gotta kinda go overkill, but you're only really generally like a, a turn or two turns off from, from having it in a tightened position. And we'll actually want to raise this up a little bit to clear the chair here and then we're going to tighten that down and then we just take our tabletop and uh, of course insert that there and we can go ahead and tighten that down if we're satisfied with the positioning of this of course you can uh, adjust things uh, infinitely as you desire um, also here on the bed one thing to talk about is going to be these reading lights um, very easy uh, on off uh, but I really like these because they have that touch screen. So it's not an actual button, but it's a touch screen. Uh, of course, you can put that blue light on. It uh, makes it easy to find the fixture. But if you were to actually hold down that on-off switch, uh, it acts like a dimmer as well. And then, of course, we turn it off. All right, guys, we hope you enjoyed the walkthrough. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to see more of, feel free to go ahead and comment below. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We hope you have a great day. The glow step, the glow step, glow step revolution. And then, if you also needed to do that, you could. And you go ahead and. Oh my God, dude! Uh, this is a, you know, it's, it's kind of. Oh, they're just steps, man. And you go ahead and fold everything in. <laughs>